Hey guys, today I'm going to be making a more detailed version of the Celeste Chapter 1 Dashes tutorial. Let's start with the settings. First, I like to make all my face buttons jump, that way I don't accidentally press dash. Then, because you need to have at least one button on each action, I bind dash to L1 because I never touch that button. I also bind talk to L2 as that's another button I never press. Feel free to modify the controls to your liking as this is my personal preference as it makes some parts easier. Lastly, if you want to use the in-game timer, the option is available at the bottom of the settings menu. I recommend keeping it on chapter unless you're doing a full run of the game. Now you can go ahead and start the save file that you want the golden strawberry on and choose chapter 1 Forsaken City. So this first room is very straightforward. All you need to do is hold right and the climb button while jumping when necessary. This next room is where you'll do your first spike jump. To perform a spike jump, you want to hold on the wall and jump while not holding any directions as you can see in the bottom right my controller. You're going to have to time it to where you jump as soon as you grab the wall and hold right. This can be a bit tricky at first, but in a matter of minutes, you'll be a natural. This room can also be a bit tricky if you're not aware of some weird mechanics in the game, such as being able to jump after you're off the platform. The rest of the screen is some climbing and a spike jump. This room is very simple in that there isn't many new things to learn other than holding left as soon as you wall jump in order to grab the wall above you. This room is probably the most simple one in the whole chapter because all you need to do is climb and wall jump. Just be aware that the gray platforms disappear if you step on the top of them. This room has many different ways of doing it, but the fastest way is to ledge jump and start holding climb after you pass the icy wall hanging down. You also grab onto the top which loses time. Now this room can be considered the biggest power spike in the run. Many of your resets will be done in this room, especially if you haven't practiced your spike jumps enough. The first spike jump is the most precise jump so far in the run, and the second half of the room can be done the slow loser way, or the cool fast way, which is the one I'm going to show you. For the first spike jump, I like to align the front of the foot with where the furthest right X tile starts going inwards which seems most reliable to me. After lining up, you have to quickly tap jump and hold climb and prepare to time the spike jump. After clearing the long row of spikes, climb up the wall and jump to the smaller wall to perform another time spike jump. This next room is absolute torture. There's only one new mechanic that you must master for this part, the ceiling double jump. To perform this trick, you must first climb up to the highest point and line up the outline of the hair, or the first red pixel of the hair, with the top of the ceiling as seen here. Next, the worst part is having to perform the double jump. To do this, you have to press two separate jump buttons in a very short time frame from one another. This is where setting all the face buttons to jump really helps as you can just slide your finger from one button to another very quickly. You will be able to tell if you successfully did it if you see two dust clouds diagonal from each other after you jump. This room is just jumps and a small climb. Just be careful not to get hit by spikes or crushed by the vertical box. All you need to do is bounce onto the floating wall and spike them to the next jump pad and climb onto the next room. This room has a bit of a gimmick in that the ice blocks fall when you step on them, similar to the gray blocks from earlier. What you need to do is grab onto the right wall in the pit and jump out of the pit to the right side of that wall. From here you want to spike jump to the gray blocks and quickly grab onto the wall above. Make your way to the wooden platform and leap to the other side to complete this screen. This room features two elevator platforms that can crush you or make you hit a spike. Just be patient on the first one and stand in the middle for the second one. This next screen feels like a jug because all you have to do is hold on to the moving platform and climb up. Next up is the long leap of faith which can be achieved with the moving platform. You have to grab onto the top of the platform to make it easy to clear the gap. Afterwards, go up to proceed into the next room. Okay, so your little break with all the easy rooms is over now. This place incorporates three spike jumps and a new mechanic, stamina saving wall jumps. 
For the first jump, I like to jump right as the grass ends. Just perform a spike jump there to grab onto the next wall and make your way to the taller wall. Here you will perform a trick that makes it so you don't lose stamina, but you still manage to go up the wall. To do it, you have to wall jump while not holding any directions, then immediately hold towards the wall again, all while never pressing the climb button. You can use my controller inputs as a guide because it's kind of difficult to explain in words. The next jump is sort of difficult because I don't really have a lineup or anything, I just kind of wing it. It's similar to the reset room spike jump except more deadly if you fail it. The last part is also very difficult because you need to not press any directions while falling from the wall hanging down. First grab onto the walls and slowly make your way down to the lowest point. Stop grabbing the wall and then immediately hold climb again and time the spike jump. The next room consists of a very strange ledge jump from disappearing blocks. The only reason this room is kind of difficult is because of the ceiling that you can bonk on. As we get closer to the end, this room can really stop you in your tracks, seeing as it takes the principles of the falling spike jump from a few rooms ago and the most difficult ledge jump yet. First make sure to jump as far away from the ledge as possible, then jump to the next wall and perform a falling spike jump. This will launch you and you will need to control yourself in the air to land onto another set of spikes to perform one last falling spike jump. First you want to grab onto the moving platform at the top and launch yourself to the other side. Next, do some stamina saving wall jumps until you make it to around 3 fourths of the way up and do a left jump to try to grab the elevator. The elevator will launch you up and then you just need to wall jump across and make the final jump. If you finish this, collect the golden strawberry and you have officially done Chapter 1 of Celeste Dashless. For today guys, if you found this helpful and or mildly entertaining, please consider subscribing and checking out some of my other videos, like this one where me and the boys get into a 1v5 ranked game, or the original tutorial so you can see how bad I was before.